now we take this problem to the next level here because this is not in a nice neat graphable form so I'm going to need to complete the square on it but the completing the square will be a little bit different than how we use completing the square to solve an equation I'm going to begin by inserting a blank to the left of this constant term. Now it used to be that constant term you had an equal zero on the other side and we brought this to the other side. I want to keep the 13 on the right hand side because I don't want to mess around with this y equals that I have on the left. So just slide that 13 over. Then what I need to do is I need to factor out that leading coefficient which gives me x squared plus 6x blank close parentheses then plus 13. Factoring out that 2 cannot reach over the 13 because I've closed off the parentheses. Now we've got a couple things to watch out for. First off, we're going to cut the 6 and half to a 3 and square it to a 9. Well, technically, that is not a 9. Because there's a 2 out front, we've actually added 18 in that blank. And Previously, when we completed the square, whatever we added to one side, we added to the other. So add 18 to the right, add 18 to the left. But I don't want to add 18 to the left. I want to keep the y equals. So what I'm going to do is add 18 into that blank and then unadd it or subtract it off on that right-hand side also. So that's something we have to do when we complete the square with these parabolas. We're going to have y equals 2 times x plus 3 quantity squared and when I subtract 13 minus 18 I'm gonna have negative 5 so you've got to be very careful here now let me give you one little comment here notice that this positive 2 out front is positive and over here we've got a negative 18 those two numbers will be opposite in sign had this been a negative 2 that 9 would have represented really a negative 18 and we'd have to add 18 to compensate and this would be a positive with a negative over there so where I have these two stars those numbers will always be opposite in sign now that we've completed the square they want us to name the vertex well that's pretty easy we change the sign of the 3 to negative 3 and bring down our negative 5 um, if we were to graph this, that 2 out front would tell us with this, what I'm calling kind of slope, that we can rise 2 and run 1 to get to another point. So if we run 1 to the left and to the right, our x coordinates are going to be negative 4 comma something and negative 2 comma something. Now the rise will be 2 which says add 2 to this negative 5 to get up to negative 3. Now if we're needing two additional points on each side well now we've got a little bit of a problem because I can't rise 2 and run 1 again but I do know negative 3, negative 4, I'm going to have negative 5 comma something and over on the other side negative 1 comma something. The y value in each of these cases is going to be the same because of symmetry. And so I've got to take some, either one of these, your choice, and substitute it into the equation to find the missing y value. Now you have a choice of negative 5 or negative 1. Let's do the negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2, which squares to 4. 4 times the 2 out front is 8. Minus 5 is 3. And so we will have 3 as the y coordinate for those two additional points and you can see that we've got all five points that we're asked to have the vertex and two points that will be on either side let's do another problem where we have to complete the square p of x is equal to I'm going to factor out the negative 3 from the first two terms notice this is going to become a minus 2x inside the parentheses and I'm going to slide the negative 5 over to the right now I can cut the negative 2 in front of x in half to negative 1 and square it to positive 1. But that's not a 1, that's really a negative 3 because that negative 3 out front distributes. Since I've subtracted 3 on the right, I need to add 3 on the right. And notice as I told you, here we have a negative, there we have a positive. These two values where I'm putting the stars will be opposite in sign. That's just a little double check for ourselves. Now completing the square, we have x minus 1 squared. 
we have our leading coefficient in negative 3, and adding the negative 5 and 3 together, we have minus 2 off on the right. So there is our completed square form of the, of the parabola. We can see that the vertex is going to be located at positive 1, negative 2, changing the sign of the 1 that's coming out of the parentheses, and we need to find a couple more points. Because of this negative 3, we know it's run, op opening downward, and we can think of this as having a rise of negative 3 and a run of 1. Well, if I run 1 to the left, it'll be at 0 comma something, and if I run 1 to the right, I'll be at 2 comma something. Notice I've got 0, 1, 2 as kind of a pattern here. Now we said the rise is negative 3, so subtracting 3 from the negative 2, I'm going to have negative 5 for those y coordinates. It's asking for an additional point on each side, so I'm going to have negative 1 as an x coordinate and positive 3 as an x coordinate, which I'm going to want to substitute into the equation, and I'm going to begin with a 3. 3 minus 1 is 2, which squares to 4. 4 times the negative 3 out front is negative 12, minus 2 more is negative 14. So each of these y-coordinates of these extra points we're looking for will be negative 14.